Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is this is me. <laughs> um, figured I'd I'd show my face. I mean, I'm not opposed to it or anything like that. Just typical fat white kid. That's that's really much it. Um, this app is a little weird. Like, I can't flip the camera around while I'm talking to you guys this way. So I got to like stop the video and then switch the camera, and then I can show you guys. My plan for all this, but my plan is to, uh, I'm going to uh, put the bed on it, uh, drop the bed down, get the weight on the chassis, on the actual suspension, then that'll compress it to where it's supposed to be. Then after it's compressed to where it's supposed to be, I'm going to take some measurements from the chassis to the axle, or to a bracket that I can find that's real easy to measure on there. So I'll get that, because that'll be in my compressed suspension, and then I'll pop the bed back off. I'm going to put like a 2x4 or something across it to be able to ratchet strap it to the axle. And then I'm going to pull it down and then uh, that'll compress the suspension and put it right where I need it to be for uh, mocking up my shocks and my bags and all that stuff. Because I did get my bags. bags are right here. Um, can't really see them. I'll, I'll pop them out of the box when I'm, when I'm about to set it up and I'll go through all the stuff that I got. It's It was real cheap. It was like... 87 bucks for two bags um, a decent amount of hose and then uh, some fittings and then I also bought the brackets too these are all from uh, chassis tech off eBay I think it'll all work out real well and then these are just my my push clip zip tie things for the wiring harness um, those are uh, welding lenses actually so that'll be nice so I'll actually I'll be able to put my welding helmet together and then these are, I forget what those are. I think those are uh, sanding discs, I believe. I'll have to mark out my address on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think those are my grinding discs. Yeah, those are my grinding discs. My little 36 three, or 2 inch grinding discs for my, uh, my air sander. My little 90. But yeah, we'll get this cracking and I'll eat my food because I'm a fat kid and I just woke up. So I'm not really a fan of McDonald's, but that's the closest thing to out here because I'm in the middle of nowhere. So we'll get some food going, some tunes cranking, and we'll keep making this video. See how this turns out. I think it's going pretty well, but we'll see. All right, so I got everything mocked up. Well, I didn't have anything mocked up. I just got really excited and I threw the bags and everything out there and on there. Let's see if I can I can do this. This will get better when I get better better cameras and stuff like that because I'll probably use my phone, a GoPro, and like a decent camera. But we'll we'll take a look at this. This is what I have going. Um, I just got really excited and I threw everything in. I can I'll explain to you. I'll show you what I was. Right, so this is what earlier. I was talking about. What I was using <clears throat> when I said I was going to use the board to uh, pull the axle to the chassis, or basically put load on the suspension. It ended up being when I did my drop the box on it. It ended up being a nine, nine and a nine and a sixteenth to the top of the chassis on this side, and nine and an eighth to the top of the chassis on that side. So, which isn't uncommon because the gas tank is on this side. So this spring is going to sag a little bit more just because it constantly has, you know, you know, 35 gallon gas tank over here, you know, putting more load in the spring. So the spring's going to sag. So, but an eighth inch of sag from side to side, that's, that's nothing. But I got really excited after I did that. And then I put my bags in there to see if they'd work with my wheels. This bracket's going to come in quite a bit. I'm not sure this is how it's all going to work out yet. But yeah, that's that's kind of where my bag is gonna go. Yeah, there we go. That's that's a little better lighting. But that's how the bag is gonna go. I'll still be able to get my U-bolts out, so it's not really a big thing. But yeah, that's that's more or less what I'm gonna be going for. And those are the wheels I was talking about, the the Hellcat replicas. <clears throat> they're uh they're uh 22 by 10. They're uh, wrapped in a. 30545. Really dig how much lighter they are than the SRT 1022s. 
I mean, yeah, this is an alloy wheel, and that's a that's a steel wheel. But yeah, this is this is how I'm gonna set it up. And I didn't cover my axle center line with my two by four. I got it just just behind, so I'll be able to measure off that to get my shocks. That way, both sides are exactly the same. And then we can go from there. And then I can get this stupid bar out today. This stupid little bracket. Which would be fantastic. But we got it all set up. Oh, and I don't have my, my rotor in here either. So that'll also bring this out further. But I mean, there's there's room for days in there. So I'm not worried worried about it. And I'll never have a any wheel bigger than a 305 back here. Because... I really like the 305 45 setup on these trucks. Well, when they're lowered, anyways. But we'll get cracking on that. Get the rear bar in and cut up some brackets. Oh, this is what I was uh, talking about earlier. These are my 36 grit sanding, 2 inch sanding discs. They're the roll lock for my 90 uh, air grinder. And those are those, uh, what you call it? push lock zip lock things uh zip tie things i was getting i had ordered these all the way from china because nowhere online could i get them anywhere else but ebay i don't know if that's like the only place you can get them but that's the only place i found them and then i got new visors or new uh face uh screens for my my air gas not air gas um what the hell is that called speed glass uh welding helmet these were like 13 bucks for 10 of them. I mean, it's a pretty old helmet. I got it back in 06. So, I mean, it's a pretty old helmet. And I still found this place on eBay that sell, sold them to me. So, go check them out. I mean, if you have, you know, an old helmet or something like that that you're looking for, you know, screen, inner or outer screens for, I'm sure they're going to have it. Because, I mean, they had it for my helmet, so they should have it for yours. And then this is like the rest of the airbag stuff I was talking about. These are the fittings I got. I just got a T and then two 90s. Those come with the kit. I didn't have to pay, you know, extra for them. I'm sure they're figured into the price, but that's pretty much about it. And these are, uh, these brackets. Well, I should show you this one. These are meant for a three, a three inch axle. But the, oh, the axles on the Rams are a three and a half inch axle. Uh, it tapers out. It goes from a three inch to a three and a half. It'd be easier to show you guys on this side because it goes goes from a three to a three and a half. And from my experience, when I'm working on a three three and a half inch axle, it's really not that much of a difference. Um, all you do is have to trim these corners, probably from about there to there on both sides, and it'll slip right over a three and a half. Because I mean, the outside diameter of a uh, three inch circle versus a three inch three and a half inch circle isn't really that much difference because you know you split that by two and so you know, only a quarter inch difference so eighth inch eighth inch on this side and then it'll slide right over no no big deal you don't always have to buy the exact bracket for the axle tube that you have especially when you got weird weird dodge stuff that you know goes from a three inch to a three and a half and tapers and all that stuff i don't know if chevys and fords do that either but i know this truck does it or any of the nine and a quarters from uh rams and both and dakotas because my dakota is like that too and i have brackets on that axle that were you know designed for a three inch axle as well because i'm not sure if it's just a mopar thing to do three and a half inch axles or or what but it's not that big of a deal so I'll get this tube in there, get my brackets cut up, and I'll update you guys when I can. All right, so I got, so I'm not screaming at you guys. So I got um, my tube, my, I got my tube mocked up. I got that in there. Um, it, it's not in there like where it's supposed to be. I just slid it in there to kind of get the height and then did some measurements as well as going on the bed. I measured oh, measured under there. I measured from the bottom bottom of this to that. It's like uh, two and three eighths. So I can be from the top of the chassis to the top of my shock bracket. So from the top of my chassis to the top of my shock bracket, which will be, well, 
at the, to the top of that one is uh, I can do it like two and an eighth. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so I did uh, did some rough measuring and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use the, because uh, this truck had, uh, like I was saying in one of the previous videos, I did uh, use my dad's old uh, axle flip kit. And then that flip kit came with like shock drop brackets. And those would just come. Let's see if I can do this. This is terrible. I, I'm just going to switch the camera. So those brackets, they kind of just clamped onto this and then they flipped underneath and then they dropped like the axle, or not the axle, the shock mount down here. So instead of being up here, you know, it's dropped down. So then you can just use, you know, stock shocks. But now I'm going to just do like a custom length shock. Well, not really custom, but just I'm going to measure from point to point and then just get that. But like I was saying, I can just get... I can be as high as two and three eighths bef uh, before I start hitting the bed, the bed. So like I'm not gonna be that high at all. So I'm gonna make those brackets off of these ones. So and these these were welded. These were the brackets. I, I'm cutting them now. The only reason why I'm filming is because my battery died, and I forgot to <laughs> throw the batteries on the charger before I started working. But uh, I'm cutting that out with the inch and three eighths hole saw. Cutting through bolt all all four of them at once, so they're all the same. I got a, I threw bolts through there, so that way you know they're all lined up, and then keeping them all together. And then when I'm done uh, cutting through them, I'm probably going to uh, I might not, but I'll tack them together, and then I'm going to take the bolt out, and then I'm going to cut this bottom part off, and then uh, finagle with this bracket and make it maybe look a little bit better. Well, as as good as I can. But that's where I got with those. All right, so I got my uh, axle tube back in, or not back in, but I got my axle tube uh, tacked in. Then I welded it in because it's where it needs to be. It doesn't need to move anywhere. I mean, it's as high as I can go, and it's as far forward as I want to go. Um, the chassis is uh, tilting at like uh, one degree, uh, one degree, uh, what is it, forwards. So then all I did was uh, make it go uh, five, no, I'm thinking of this the wrong way. It's tilting backwards one degree, tilting backwards one degree, so then I just made it go, made the, uh, my protractor back four degrees, so then my shock will be at three degrees. All right, so this is how I set it all up. So I just got it all tacked in and welded in. Uh, these are all my my marks on because I normally write down on the chassis like what everything is I really need to get a better camera so that way I can flip back and forth but anyways what I was saying is yeah I normally write down what I'm what I'm doing for my chassis and then these are uh, my shock measurements I don't know if you can really see that but it's uh center to center it's uh 14 and three quarters and then from with it uh, suspension fully compressed, it'd be uh, four inches to the tip of my pump stop. So that needs to be the travel uh, upwards. And then suspension sag, I'm not really too worried about suspension sag because, I mean, it'll it'll probably be, you know, enough. And, you know, this thing is not going to be hanging up in the air and, you know, doing Baja stuff with it. So I don't need to worry about, you know, ripping the shocks out, you know, flying over stuff, you know with the uh, shocks not extending far enough. So I'm sure everything will work out. I'm, I'm assuming, you know, four inches up and then probably four inches down or two inches down. You know, that'll probably be my travel, you know, somewhere in there. But we'll see what's out there for shocks. And then I'll go from there. Because I know they make drop shocks for these trucks, but I don't know if they will be uh, small enough. Ow. But yeah, I got, uh, I got the axle... Why do I keep saying axle? I got the shock tube welded in there, and then I got the brackets both tacked on. And uh, how I put these brackets on is I, I just copy this one. Like that's that's what I do with like most things, like especially like super super simple stuff like this. Especially when there's factory stuff on it, you know, I could just copy that and make it come over. And what I did copy was, um, what you call it, from uh, the outside or the inside of the chassis 
to the outside of this bracket is seven eighths of an inch. So then all I did was transfer that over here and then leveled off the top of my bracket. And then I made sure my bracket was, you know, straight, you know, straight this way and then straight that way. And then I just tacked it up and then I finagled with this one and then made it all straight in every way it could possibly be. And then I made sure that this edge uh, matched up with the edge of the mm -hmm. bracket down there, which it does. So I just put a, a straight edge between the two and then I put a level on that straight edge to make sure everything was where it needs to be. And then to get this bracket, all I did was put the shock in there, uh, bolted it up and then made sure this bracket was, you know, as straight as it could be, you know, with the, with holding uh, the shock in there. And I just tacked that on. And then I did that to the same thing to the other side. So now it's ready for shocks and then that'll be good to go. And then tomorrow when I get out here, I can do some dirty work and cut these brackets off the rest of the way. And then I can start setting up for my bags because those will take a little while. Cutting that stuff always takes a little, a little bit longer than, you know, you'd think. Because if I had a plasma cutter, I could just go in here and burn the stuff out. And then it wouldn't even be a big deal. But I ain't got one of those yet. So we'll just go in and use the cutoff wheel and cut that all off. And then tomorrow I will start working on this. So, but I mean, it's going to be really straightforward. I mean... All I do is have to make this fit because it's sitting a lot higher right now just because, you know, it's not actually sitting on the axle. So when I go in and uh, massage both sides of those, that will drop down. I actually won't have to massage this side as much because it's landing right on that taper. So it might be a little bit of a bear to figure out, but it's not going to be too terrible. But, I mean, that that is what it is. And then this upper bracket, I'll get that on there. But I'm noticing what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to probably put uh, cardboard paper on this and copy it. And then I'll use the paper cardboard. And then I'm going to use that as my template for cutting this out. Because as you can see, the chassis, you know, comes out and goes in. And then it comes in right here again. So I'm going to need to, you know, account for all that. And I'm not going to sit here and grind and whittle away on this when I can just do it on it. A piece of cardboard paper and get this where I need to be you know almost in one shot and then once I get this in and then the bag compressed to where it needs to be for you know ride height and make it all square and stuff then I'll probably come in and maybe do some small gussets in here because this plate's going to go back in a decent ways and I'm thinking I might actually cut some holes like some speed holes I guess you could call them in this plate since it's a big solid quarter inch plate so just to get some of the weight off of there and then it will hang below my chassis a little bit i'll probably come back in here and then angle it a little bit better into the bottom of my chassis or i could just cut this out when i cut this out that'll move in and then i could maybe uh triangulate it underneath Cause I got, I have some more quarter inch plate and then maybe triangulate it underneath, but I think that might look kind of stupid. I mean, it, it'd be more functional than anything else, but I mean, it's just bags that are, you know, going to be for, you know, extra weight for when I'm towing stuff. So the ass end of my truck isn't sagging. So it, this isn't going to be like a super crucial thing to where like all my vehicle weight is riding on these bags. So if I do that, do that in the future, do that in the future. I'll probably redesign this a different way. I'll probably put some tubing and some other stuff on here to brace everything up. But for right now, that's that's pretty much what I'm going to run. Is I'm just going to weld this plate on, and then maybe gust it a little bit, and then. So that's call that's more or less what the today's video is going to be. That's all I'm going to do for today. Uh, and I'll come back tomorrow. Come out back out here tomorrow. Make another video of me doing the bags. I mean, I could do videos of like separate things like you know bagging and all that kind of stuff but i like it in this format a little bit better I'm, I'm not sure what anybody else prefers but it almost feels more like i'm telling a story about the truck versus you know you know i'm just you know doing bags that'll be a separate video doing the the shocks that'll be a video i'd rather have it just like a continuous build i guess you could call it almost like like a form build 
some something along those lines. So uh, if you guys have any like insight on like what you want to see, what you want me to include more into the videos, I mean, I'm all about it. So I mean, I'm doing this for me, but for you guys as well. So I mean, that that's pretty much it for today. So I'll get back at it tomorrow. I'll keep recording. I keep looking at the center of the screen to look at myself while I'm uh, recording, but I should be looking at the camera. I don't know. <laughs> I got issues, I suppose. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that'll be it for today, and then I'll see you guys again tomorrow. I'm going to try to start uploading, like, in the mornings. I don't think it really matters, my upload schedule right now, because, I mean, nobody's really watching my videos, except for, like, my dad and a couple of my friends. So, I mean... I guess we'll see you guys later. Until then.